VTCI Channel 2 welcomes you to our coverage of OPSU Aggie football. We've had the coin toss. Teams are ready to take the field. Referees getting all lined up and getting situated as well. This is a Central States Football League contest. Aggies come in with an overall record of 2-1 and 1-0 one and one and oh in conference play. Lion, Lion College comes in with an overall record of 2-2 two and two and 0-1 oh and one in conference play. The Aggies will be kicking off to the Fighting Scots. The kicker for the Aggies will be number 41, Cesar Tellez. Aggies break the huddle, they'll line up for the kickoff. Telez is one of the bigger kickers I've ever seen. He looks like he could be a fullback almost. To return to kick number 23, Trey Hawkins, and number 16, Josh Abel. All fell off the tee. They'll come over and hold it in place for him. is going to make it all the way through the end zone. Now that'll be a touchback. Ball will be brought up first and ten. Be a receiver up here, maybe. I'm losing. I'm losing you. That's why. You're off. Just turn it off. That's why. It'll be first and ten for the Scots at the 25-yard line. Starting defense for the Aggies. Add in number 48, Cameron Lyons. Nose tackle, number 61, Zach Clack. At the other defensive end, number 58, David Smith. We'll get back to the rest here. Man in motion. Pistol formation. Turn, fakes the handoff, rolls out to the wide side of the field. It's caught up past the 35 and dragged out of bounds at about the 37. Terrell Collin on the tackle. So first down on the first play of the game. Other Aggie starters on defense. Number 40 at linebacker, Jawan Purifoy. Number 59, Nate Latehead. Number 49, Dominic Bell. And number 92, Aaron Kinch. At safety, number 15, Dijon Jeffrey. Number 37, Terrell Fallon. And at cornerback, number 28, Marcus McCants. And number seven, Dante Shipman. There's a run to the wide side. He's up past the 40-yard line. Finally knocked down at about the 44-yard line by Dominic Bell. We've got multiple flags on the field. After the play, that's going to be a personal foul. Looks like they're telling Dante Shipman to get off the field. He must have been involved in it. And that's a... Early blow to this Aggie defense. You don't want to see the penalties come out this early. Only about 45 seconds into the game. lost the starter, Dante Shipman, the junior safety, has been ejected from the game, as well as number 83, a wide receiver for Lyon College, Shaka Robinson. They both have been tossed out of the game. Looked like the referee made a, a, a gesture that maybe punches had been thrown. Yeah, and that's just a bit of a lack of discipline right there to start out this game. they got to do better than that. And both of these teams on the precipice of launching into the 
main meet of their seasons, and a loss here would be bad for either team, and players getting ejected doesn't help anybody. Well, less than a minute into the game, and Dante Shipman's going to have to head to the locker room. His day's over with, so back to the game at hand. Two split to the boundary side, man in motion. It'll turn, fake the hands out, rolls out to the wide side, hit. That does get the pass off, it falls incomplete. Some good pressure there put on by David Smith. So it'll be second down. And about four or five yards to go. We'll call it four. And the good, thing, for. the good thing is the Aggies continue to get this pressure, and that's what we saw the first game we were here. And they got pressure on the quarterback. Didn't, wasn't able to play very well under the pressure, so Aggies got that 10 nothing win, mostly done by the defense. Looks like they're marking off a penalty on the Aggies. I didn't see a flag on the field. Dead ball, a sports lot conduct. Phoenix, OPSU, players, not coaches. 15 yard penalty. Oh, a call on the bench. So the Aggies better calm down the chippiness and just play some football. They've cost themselves 15 yards, and uh, the Fighting Scots are now in Aggie territory. And in motion again, quick throw outside on a bubble screen, breaks the first tackle, still on his feet, falls forward inside the 35 yard line. Boy, he was a slippery one as he broke through several no, tackles. No, no, no. <laughs> that was Dominic Bell on the tackle, but that, that receiver, number 87, Jacques Parker came in and was uh, avoided several Aggie tacklers to gain about six yards in the play, so second and four. So pistol formation, kind of a power <laughs> Formation back and motion. They'll run right behind him. And several Aggies bring him down. But not until he gains about two, maybe three yards on the play. The reason it was a short game, though, is you can tell as soon as number 36, the H back, win in motion, he lines up right behind the line there, so you can tell almost exactly where the run's going, most probably. So. Easy for the Aggie defense to read. Puts them at a third and short instead of first down. So third and two here. And we've got a timeout on the field. 12.40 still left to play in the first quarter. Score still 0-0. Go out of the timeout. Still third and a long two. Two split to the wide side, one to the boundary side. Pistol formation. Man in motion again. Fakes the handoff. Quarterback's going to keep it to the left. And he's going to be stopped short. Brought in a backup quarterback there, John Josh Sierra. And he was stuffed in the hole. And you got to think. Uh, quarterback Cody Jones coming off what might have been a career game against Trinity Bible last week, 61 to nothing. Uh, I think he threw for somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 yards. You got to think something's up medically with him if he's not out there at this point. Ignacio Gomez in for the kick. This is going to be quite a doozy, a 51 yard attempt. Ball's down, there's the kick, it's blocked! Aggies block it, ball still loose on the ground. A couple of Aggies try to pick it up and run with it, but it's recovered there, so the Aggies will take over. First and 10, that's a 41 yard line. And a great defensive play by the Aggies, going against the reigning CSFL Special Teams Player of the Week, uh, the kicker for Lyon there. And Man, when you see that happen, that is really a momentum shift. And the kick by Lyon, ironically blocked by Cameron Lyons. Of course, it did look like several Aggies were back there. If he didn't get it, it looked like somebody else was going to as well. So, a little good, poetic justice there. Good penetration there. The Aggies offense on the field for the first time today. DJ Scott, the quarterback. 
He's in the pistol formation. They'll turn, hand off to the tailback. He's going to be hit for maybe no gain or a loss. That's number 22, who is not listed on the deep, too deep chart. That's Orlando Heyman, who was in to rush the ball. The other starters for the Aggies, a wide receiver, number four, Nick West. Number one, Miguel Hudson. Number 13, Cameron Taylor at tight end, Brady Barrett. There's a snap, turn, handoff again to Hudson. And really no gain on that play, maybe half a yard. So it's going to be third down and about nine yards to go. Other starters on the offensive line for the Aggies at tackle, number 75, Jacob Poppel. At guard, number 74, Matthew Grants. At center, number 71, Cullen Oliver. At guard, number 73, Diego Arenas. And number 77 at tackle, Dominique Thomas. Back to pass, lets it go. Low pass is dropped by Nick West. And so three and out, the Aggies are gonna be punting already. Not much of an offensive series there. Well, the good thing is though, they got a good punter in Jacob Test. The bad thing is the wind's against him right now as he sets up for his first punt of the day. Jacob, so we'll... Jacob Test, a local kid, graduated from Texoma High School. There's the snap and the kick. And it's going to go out of bounds at about the 16 yard line. So good flip of the field there. And Lion College will take back over with 10.26 still left in the first quarter. Here we get to see that great Aggie defense come out once again. It's been the pride of this team so far this season. Their only really bad slip up was against Tarleton, but that's a quality opponent. They're really a top-notch program in the NCAA Division II. As we mentioned, they played in their conference last year when they were playing NCAA Division II. Back at the line of scrimmage, same pistol formation. They'll have two wides to the wide side of the field. Jones is back in here. Inside receiver. Goes back out, they'll throw it to him. Puts up in the air, was it intercepted? It was intercepted. Number 28, Marcus McCants with the interception. And the Aggies get an early break. And what were we just talking about? The Aggie defense comes through on the very first play against Cody Jones, who did a really good job taking care of the football last week. But this time, just the mix-up bounces off his receiver's hands and into the hands of Marcus McCants. And now the Aggies take over with great field position with DJ Scott coming in at quarterback, Heyman back at running back, which tells you they are not afraid to start anybody at running back. I doubt hardly anybody on campus has heard the name Orlando Heyman so far, but. That was McCant's second interception of the season. And we've got a stoppage on the field. And they'll straighten out the clock issues. Well, Aggies offense starting at the 22 yard line. They'll turn, hand it off to the tailback again. Right on the right side this time, he's going to be close to a first down. Nice running there by Orlando Heyman. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage. That's good for another Aggie first down. And they'll say that is a first down. Snap. Scott rolls out to his left. He's going to take off and run. He's inside the five. Dallas for the goal line. And they'll mark him just short. Looked like his knee touched down just before he reached the ball out over the goal line. So it'll be second and goal from about a foot out, if that far. But here's where you see the athleticism of Scott come into play. He rolls out to his left. 
and there's a little pocket of defenders right there, but able to evade them and get right close to the goal line when the defenders had a beat on them almost four yards out. High formation, and we've got a flag. Let's see what who that's going to be on. And they're going to call that one on the center. Colin Oliver may have moved the ball just a little bit. You did see almost the entire defensive line of Lion move. And a lot of times when you see that, they're watching the ball, and just that little bit of movement will get them all to move. But the call goes against the center on that one. So back to just past the five yard line, pistol formation, two split to the boundary side, man in motion. And we've got a timeout on the field. As Coach Gaskamp couldn't, was not happy with what was going on out there. So with 9.02 left in the first quarter, we're still tied up at zero. We're talking about Orlando Heyman. Orlando Heyman is actually a transfer from Midwestern State, who was also a conference foe last year at NCAA Division II. 5'11", 200 pound junior from Vernon, Texas. Scott in the pistol formation again. Man in motion, he'll turn, hand off to the tailback again. And he's inside the five to about the three yard line. So Heyman's brought down there. So it's going to be third and goal. Forward progress should take them pretty close there, depending on where they spot the ball. They'll line up two split to the left, one to the right. Drops back to pass, Scott throws it on the flat. He's open, Howard, one man to beat. And he's in the end zone for a touchdown. Who else? Orlando Heyman. And that was courageous by DJ Scott there. Stood in the pocket, even though the defender was coming at him, ready to smash him, took the hit, still made the throw out into the flat, scored the touchdown. And threw the ball right where he needed to, out in front of, out in front of Heyman so that he could make the easy, easy grab for the touchdown. And there's the kick, and it is good. So with 8.23 left to play in the first quarter, the OPSU Aggies strike first and lead Lions College seven to nothing. Cesar Tellez places the ball on the tee. Hawkins and Abel back deep again for Lyon. And the tee once again, or ball falls off the tee once again. So they'll bring in. Nick Shields will come Nick, and hold it. Nick Shields come in and hold that. So number 14 holding for number 41. Tellez, Tommy eats leather. It's going to be caught at the 15, up to the 20, 25, and he's going to be smacked there at about the 32 yard line. That was number 42 on the tackle. To Darren Primes making that play. He'll stay out with the defense. So the big thing for the Aggie defense right now is avoid penalties. They've already had a couple early in this game, set them back a little bit. It hasn't really cost them much, so they've got a 7-0 lead right now. But you really want to avoid the penalties. Man in motion across the formation. He'll hand it off. There is a flag on the field. That's most typically going to be an offensive play. He was stopped after just a short game right at the 30-yard line by number 49, Dominic Bell. And referees either hat blew off or he took it off, which would indicate a, a second penalty as well. Yep. I think we may have another personal foul on OPSU. Offside, 
Oh, they'll say it was an offsides penalty. So offsetting penalties there, so they'll just replay the down. So still first down at the 29 yard line. And number five, quarterback Josh Sierra exits the game once again. So they're not shy about switching out quarterbacks here depending on their situation that they're in, I suppose, as Cody Jones comes back into the game. Well, it looks like Sierra's more of a, they come in at a run option type, type quarterback, whereas Jones is their passer. He'll drop back to pass under pressure. He's gonna be brought down for a sack back at the 20 yard line. Number 58, David Smith got there first. A couple of other Aggies were there as well. Like Aaron Kinch got in on that one as well. Just wonderful swarming to the football by the Aggie defensive line. Wonderful penetration. And second and 18 now. You can't ask for much better play by the defensive line so far in this game. Two splits to each side. Man comes in motion. Drop back to pass. Looks out in the flat to the motion man. He's got it up past the 25 and up near the original line of scrimmage near the 30. So it's going to be third down. Juwan Purifoy there for the tackle. Shoved him out of bounds. That was number, number 16, Josh Abel, the returner on that one. So he shifted, but they did a good job of forcing him out of bounds, making it third and very long right here. Yes, third and 11. Not too many plays in the playbook for this kind of. Pistol formation once again, man in motion. Low snap, but he grabs it easy. He's gonna be, has to step up into the pocket. He'll have, have to run, and he's gonna get the first down as he reaches past the 41, 40 yard line up to the 42. So Cody Jones shows he's got just enough wheels to get a first down for the Fighting Scots. You can see Coach Gibbs, the defensive coordinator, not happy that they allowed him to break out on that play. Broken play, they thought they should have had him, but just not quite. Quarterback rolls there. out quickly, lets it go. He's got a man open into Aggie territory up to the 40-yard line and down at about the 38-yard line. Big gainer there. And two Aggies are down on the play, Marcus McCants Juwan and... Juwan Purifoy. We, Aggies can't stand to lose him. And he is laying on the field, writhing in pain, helmet off. Both players. That was Jonathan Hendricks with that catch. We've got a timeout on the field. 6.15 left in the first quarter. Aggies lead seven to nothing. Looks like Purifoy may be okay now. have to come out for at least one play. Looks like they'll probably take a look at him. As he sits down on the bench. And Marcus McCants now up on his feet. This is interesting, number 25, Preston Baker, who's listed as our starting running back here. He uh, listed as starting running back, but hasn't played today, wasn't dressed out in their first game. Back in motion, pistol formation. They'll fake the handoff. Josh back to pass. He's going deep. He's got a man out there, but the ball too far out in front. Incomplete pass. So that's going to be second and ten. That's one of the things you'll see a lot of teams that kind of following the Patriots. I think were the ones who kind of became the masters of it. You get a first down past the 50-yard line or near the 50-yard line, and they'll take a shot towards the end zone. Didn't work out this time. It'll be second and 10 for the Fighting Scots. Kind of a 
power pistol formation. Back in motion again. He'll fake the run that way. Quarterback rolls out to his left. It's caught by Hendricks. He's up to 25. Ball was loose on the ground. But that's going to be recovered by the Fighting Scots. So it's still going to be theirs. First down inside the 25 yard line at the 24. So Lion College, the offense playing well right now. But if you're the Aggie defense, you really got to tighten up. You don't want to let them get inside the 20 because that's. You let them get inside the red zone, then they have a much better chance to score than they would, say, right outside the 20. Trips formation. He'll throw back to the boundary side to Hendricks again, who's got three catches on his drive. Splits the defenders. He's up near the inside the 10-yard line, inside the five before he's finally brought down. Took about Hendricks five Aggies to do it. Six foot three, 260-pound tight end. That's a load. Well, it's going to be first and goal. Just in, looks like they've marked it just inside the five yard line. Six three two sixty. That's bordering on National Football League size. Come on, Aggie fans, get behind your football team. And in motion again. They'll run to that side with two backs. There's a flag on the field. That's in the area of holding. We'll have to see what the call is. Oh, a chop block penalty. That'll move them back 15, so. That helps out the Aggies quite a bit as the ball's marked at about the 19 yard line now. Still first and goal situation. So trips formation to the wide side of the field. One to the boundary side. Pistol formation, man in motion. Low snap, he picks it up, throws quickly out to the wide side. He's got his man. And he's knocked out of bounds. Jermaine Wright on the tackle. Jermaine Wright on the tackle. As he does get inside the 10 yard line for a second down. So about a 10 yard gain there to put themselves in a little better, better position. And it, it seems like Cody Jones works best out of broken or half broken plays, you know? When he gets a low snap or something goes a little bit wrong, that's when he makes it happen, which might be merely circumstantial or might perform very well under pressure, who knows. And we've got a timeout on the field. 3.33 still left first quarter. OPSU Aggies seven, Lions fighting Scots zero. Oh, out of the timeout. Second and goal from the nine yard line for the Fighting Scots. Aggies holding on to a seven nothing lead. Hand off to the man in motion. He'll go wide. Aggies trying to drag him out further. Cuts inside two defenders, but he's stopped before he can get in. But he's up to about the three, two or three yard line where it'll be third down. Just a nice jet sweep play. Hand off to Josh Abel. You saw the safety to John Jeffrey get cut on the outside as he was trying to go out to make that tackle. They'll bring in the Jumbo package on defense. Jordan Bars, a 5'8", 275-pound freshman, comes in, lines up a nose tackle. Quarterback rolls out to his right. He's looking to throw it. He'll end up running it. And he will score. And he's in for the touchdown. Kind of barreled through several OPSU defenders there to get in. And Jones is a five foot 10, 200 pounds, so he's not a tiny guy by any stretch of the imagination and packs a punch at 5'11. Lining up to kick. 
Ignacio Gomez for the extra point. Aggie still trying to get situated on defense. There's a kick, and it's good. So at 2.35 left in the first quarter, it's OPSU 7, Lion 7. Number 19, Jordan Randolph. And number 37, Terrell Fallon back deep for the Aggies. kick the Aggies have returned this afternoon. First points of the season scored by the opponent on no man's land field this year. Yep. And that one's going to go out of bounds. Heavy wind blowing across the field, so that'll put the Aggies at the 35-yard line, I believe. First and 10. It'll start the Aggies out with great field position here, and I don't know if with this panhandle win you can necessarily call it a miscue by Gomez, but uh, got to work hard to keep it in bounds here with this strong win. He would have almost had to have kicked that one, I think, at maybe a 45 degree angle toward, mm -hmm. towards his sideline uh, to keep that one in bounds. There's a heavy gust there. It's going to have to start squibbing it from now on. The Aggies first and 10 at their own 35-yard line. They'll line up with trips to the wide side of the field. Shotgun formation. Heyman at running backs played well today. Hand off to Heyman. He'll run to the wide side, cuts up the field. Pass the defender, falls forward to the 46-yard line. So right, right off the bat, first down. And if there's one position where the Aggie offense is extra deep, it's a tailback. Trip formation, this time to the other side. Pistol formation, turn, fakes the handoff, rolls out to throw. Scott still in his hands, he'll take it off and run. He's at past midfield, dives forward to Scott territory. Not an eight yard gain, so he'll take that anytime. So it'll be second down and two. And who knows if they ever do run low on running backs, they could probably have DJ Scott out there at tailback and he'd do just fine. Pretty shifty guy himself. They were in motion, they'll throw it out to him at, out of the backfield. He's up past the 45, up to the 40. And he'll be brought down at about the 39-yard line. That's going to be another Aggie first down. Let's do it for another Aggie first down. Heyman will come out of the game. Heyman will come out for a little rest. It'll be Cedric Aggieman coming in for him. Aggieman started the first home game of the season and is the current leading rusher for the Aggies. Just over a minute to play in this first quarter. Banks the handoff, throws quickly to the tight end. It's caught for a short gain of about four yards on the play. Hezekiah Foy. Hezekiah Foy on the catch. Second down, six yards to go. Two backs to the right of Scott. Handed off to Aggieman back up the middle. He's inside the 30-yard line, and he's going to have a first down, it looks like, or very close. Miguel Hudson and Cameron Taylor will take the game. And it is another first down. You can't imagine there'll be much of a drop-off at running back with a guy in here. As you said, he is the leading rusher for this team so far. Final seconds ticking off in the quarter. Throws it out in the flat to Aggieman. He's up to the 25, dies forward to about the 24. 
Got about a six yard gain on the first down. Looks like the final seconds of the first quarter. We'll be running out. And that's the end of the first quarter. We're all tied up at seven apiece. We were talking about it during the break. Preston Baker looks like he's about to see his first action here at Carl Wooten Field this season. Yeah, listed as the starting tailback, but this is the first action we've seen from him this year. Fakes the handoff and the throw. Ball bobbled and it's intercepted. Up to the 20 yard line, still on his feet. And a big scrum, several flags flown just past the 20 yard line. And that was Cam Taylor not able to haul that one in. Just couldn't quite uh, corral that one there. He went for it, bobbled it a little bit, allowed the defender to get at it. And a little trouble battling the elements here. Looks like it's going to be a holding call on Lyon. Of course, that was after the turnover, I'm sure. So. Yep. That was a ball that should have been caught. Bobbled several times. Well thrown ball. Could have scored on that play. Looked like he had the defender beat, but. I think it surprised. Uh, Taylor, how wide open he was. Quarterback drops back, he'll throw it out in the flat. A little bit of a screen play, that was blown up quickly. No good, Look, that was a throw and at number 74 is a good 10 yards down the field. I think it did land behind the line of scrimmage so that probably was legal, but if that ball had been thrown one yard past the line of scrimmage, that, that would have definitely been an illegal lineman downfield, legal man downfield, because he was about 10 yards down the field. <coughs> which gives you a pretty good indication that was the screenplay they wanted to run. Man in motion again. Turn, hand off to the tail, back to the wide side. Oh, several Aggies there. To blow that one up. Dominic Bell. Dominic Bell! He's played well this season, one of their top stalwarts there on defense. Cooper Savage also looked like on the tack. No, that was number 90, number 80. He was listed as a wide receiver, but, it's like, but it's Braden Price it was also there to help with that stop. Playing a little bit of defense, defensive end. So they'll line up with trips to the boundary side and one receiver to the wide side. Man in motion to the wide side though now. Drops back the pass. Flags Under early. pressure. And there was no one out there. The Darren Primes was the one with the pressure on the quarterback. We'll have to find out what the call is here. to call him offside. And that was the reason Primes was back there in such a hurry is he was offside, so beat, beat his man easily that way. And that makes up the yards that Lyon surrendered on the holding call. So it'll be third down and a long four. They may be looking for Hendricks here. Big tight end. Drops back to pass, throws it out in the flat, and nothing doing there. That's gonna make it fourth and four, and you presume no punt, but we saw a little bit of an odd sequence here the first game at Carl Wooten Field, so. Maybe we'll see some more excitement here. Jeremy Sutton there on the coverage did a good job. Nick Shields back deep. It looks like Ignacio Gomez is also their punter. Nick Shields back at his own 45-yard 45, 45 line. 
Ready to receive the punt. It should be very hard for him to punt against this wind. And gets it off, and it's going to go out of bounds. That'll set 47 yard line, so good field position for the Aggies here as they take back over with 13.28 left in the first half. We're tied up at seven apiece. And the number one thing now is to capitalize. Heyman has checked back into the game now at running back. Pistol formation, two split to the wide side, one to the boundary side. Scott drops back, throws it over towards the boundary side, through the hands. Cameron, Cameron Taylor. Taylor. Passing complete, so that's going to make it second and 10. Taylor should have had that one. It was a little bit high, but anytime it goes right through your hands, that's your fault, not the quarterbacks. There's a snap, hand off to Heyman. Cuts inside a defender, gets back to basically the original line of scrimmage, so really no gain on the play. Maybe half a yard, so it's going to be third and ten for the Aggies. Heyman will step back out. Lions College calls a timeout. With 12.48 left in the first half, it's OPSU 7, Lions 7. So out of the timeout, trips formation to the wide side for the Aggies. Aggieman in the backfield with Scott. Makes the handoff, Scott drops back to pass, he's under pressure, he'll roll out to his right, lets one go, he's got a man open. At the 40 yard line, the Lions falls forward to the 35. Nice little redemption for Cameron Taylor there. He missed one that got intercepted. He missed one at the beginning of this drive, but now he catches the one to save the drive on third and long. Oh, first and 10 for the Aggies as they move into Scott territory. Trying to regain the lead. Their lion tied it up. And in motion. Turn, hand off to Heyman, up the middle. And he'll get up to about the 32 yard line. So a gain of a, about three yards on the play. So second down and seven. Three yard and it's almost hard to keep up with this running back rotation because they switch him out so often, but that gives the offense the advantage of having a fresh set of legs in there at almost any time. Two tight ends lined up on the left side. Fake the handoff. Looks to throw that way. Throws to his wide out, but pass is just too low. Tried to get it out to Brady Barrett, or Seth Barbarino on that one, the freshman. Third down and seven yards to go for the Aggies here. They may be in four down territory as well. It would be a, too long for a field goal and too short for a punt here. Well, they're also breaking in a new kicker too, so. Scott back to pass. Let's it go. Receiver wasn't looking. We've got a flag on the field. He was double covered. Probably not the wisest throw to Nick West. Falls harmlessly to the turf for an incomplete pass though. We'll have to see what the flag is. Looked like that was in the area of holding, though, unfortunately. So probably not going to go the Aggies' way. And it was holding on the offense. Matthew Grant's call for that one. But since it makes it fourth down, Lyon will go ahead and decline that penalty. The Aggies will go for it, though, here. Although with the possibility of a quick kick does remain and try to pin the Scotsman deep in their own territory. 
pistol formation. You split to the wide side, one to the short. Let's see if they look to Taylor here. A throw. They do look to Taylor. Taylor. He's up to the 15 yard line. That's going to be a first down for the Aggies. And it seems that DJ Scott has a thing that he likes to look to Taylor in the clutch, and Taylor likes to come through in the clutch for him. So, just twice now on this drive, Cameron Taylor has come in to save the drive on a good pass by DJ Scott. Pistol formation again. Bring the tight end in motion. Fakes the handoff, rolls out to his right. Let's it go towards the end zone, a little behind him, almost intercepted. You could just see by the angle that he, when he threw it, that that one was gonna be a, be trouble there. Luckily it does not stay in the defender's hands and falls to the turf, so at least the Aggies will get another chance with second down and 10 yards to go. And it's always dangerous when a quarterback rolls out and has to throw back across his body like that. And I think he threw back across his body a little more than he had to. If he'd have just thrown it on a more of a straight line, it gave his receiver a chance to run underneath it. Quick throw out to the running back. Great grab by Aggieman. He looks like he's got the first down. Wonderful one-handed grab and a little, little out of the way by DJ Scott, but DJ Scott, not the most polished passer and his athleticism is what keeps him starting at quarterback for the Aggies. The Aggieman, just a great play. That ball was not only low, but a little bit behind. He made a great one-handed catch. He'll step out as Heyman comes in to take his spot at tailback. Turn hand off to Heyman. To the left, he falls forward into the end zone for another Aggie touchdown. Aggies take the lead on another excellent run by Heyman. Oh, Heyman's got one into the end zone by receiving and now one running. Tellez back out to kick the extra point. There's the hold and the kick. And it is good, so with 10.29 left in the first half, it's OPSU 14, Lions 7. The Aggies break the huddle after that touchdown. They'll get ready to kick it off. On the kickoff team, nice to see number 40, Jawan Farrafoy back out there. He did have an injury that kept him out of the game for a while there. Tellez having trouble with the ball again. He'll set it on there. See if he can get it to stay on this time. And here's the boot. All the way back into the end zone. And they'll just take a knee and the Scots will take it first and 10 at the 25 yard line. Nice kick there by Tellez. You can tell he's got a good leg on him. And even though the wind is blowing a little sideways, it does look like it's blowing towards that end zone just a little bit, so that probably helps, helps a little bit, but definitely, definitely moving more towards us on the sideline than it is uh, north and south of the field. And you have to put a lot of leg into it here on a day like this, just to keep it from blowing out the side. Pistol formation, two splits to each side. Hendricks that big tight end split out over here too. They'll throw it out to the back, he breaks the first tackle, tries to spin out again, but several Aggies there for the tackle. And you could tell right away that the, the sweep, the motion route was going to get the ball because Hendricks immediately broke down to block there instead of going out on a route. Good tell on that play. Of course, at that point, they're hoping they've got numbers and he can slip through that quickly. The same formation. 
Man in motion again. There's the quick throw to Hendricks. He's going to have the first down. Brought down at about the 39-yard line. That was Dominic Bell on the tackle. Bell, one of the leading tacklers for the Aggies. And definitely has been today. side again. Man in motion. He's looking that way. Looks to his motion man. Stepped in front of it. Nick Shields read that play perfectly. If that pass was a little bit low, that pass was a little high. If it was a little bit lower, that might have been a pick six. He would have waltzed into the end zone there. And Nick Shields, a popular figure on campus, but also a great defensive back if you haven't heard. Able to sniff that play out early and get his hands on it. Second and ten. Trips to the short side of the field, boundary side. And they gotta watch Henry here. He's eligible. Quick throw outside, bubble screen. And he's gonna be brought down, but not until he gets about a four or five yard gain. That was pure foy on the tackle again. So third and five now. It's third down, Aggie fans. You know what that means. again, fakes the handoff, looking over the middle. He's got Hendricks open. He Damn. breaks away from the tackle. He's at the 20, the 10, the 5, and touchdown. Hendricks has been a problem for OPSU throughout this first half, and this time he makes his way into the end zone for the tying touchdown. He's a big guy, but I'm sure what the Aggies might not have known is he has some wheels, too. 44-yard touchdown pass. Defensive back DeJean Jeffrey had trouble even catching up with him. Gomez lines up for the extra point to try to tie it up. There's the kick, and it is good. So, with 8.31 still left to play in this first half, it's OBSU 14, Lion College 14. So back deep for the Aggies. Number four, Nick West. And also number 19, Jordan Randolph. Jordan Randolph. There's the kick, goes right to Randolph, catches it about the two yard line. He's up past the 15 to 20, past the 25, and past the 30 yard line. To the 32 yard line. So. That's where the Aggies will take over, first and 10. One more block and he was headed home. Back in the game here. Scott in the pistol formation. Man in motion. He'll drop back to pass. He's going to take off running and breaks through a tackle and falls forward near the 35 yard line. That'll be a gain of about three yards on the play. Second down and seven. Look like maybe he wanted to get the ball to Barbarino there, but. Good coverage on that play. It looked like a little bit of hesitation coming out of the pocket. Caught, might have cost him a couple yards, but still a solid pick up there. And in 
motion across the formation. Turn, hand off to the tailback. And Heyman falls forward up to about the 38 yard line. That'll make it third Three down to four yards to go. Heyman. So manageable third down here. Ideally, you'd like to be in third and one, but you do have a lot of plays in your playbook for third and four, third and five if you need them. Scott drops back to pass. He'll throw it out in the flat to Heyman up to the 40 yard line. Looks and like he's close to the one. first down and fights forward. Looks like he took a shot to the back of the helmet when he was on the ground there, but looks like he's okay. That second effort gets the first down for him, and that's what we've seen out of Heyman today. A lot of speed, but a lot of fight as well. Keeps those legs churning. Scott draws the defense off sides. Got a chance for a big play. He'll throw it down the field, try to get a big play. And it's just a little bit too far out in front on Nick West. That's what you want to do on those kind of plays. It's a free play. You got five yards. Might as well. As an offside penalty is called on Lyon, Scott's hard count was able to draw them off. And plus the defensive line kind of hesitated there because they subconsciously kind of think the play's over with. And it's a chance to hit a big hitter without really gambling anything. Yeah. They're still first down, first down and five. There's a snap, fakes the handoff, throws it out in the flat. It's caught at about the 45 yard line. And it looks like he's brought down right at the line of scrimmage. That was number Miguel Hudson with the catch. Aggies back to the line, trips formation, second and five. Breaks the handoff, quick throw out to Barbarino. Makes the catch, takes a hit for it, but he's got enough for a first down in Lion territory, just short of the 45 yard line. Nice catch there by the freshman. Barbarino. He's listed as a wide receiver, but they utilize him as an H-back type in some plays because he's big and he's able to make plays. And off to Heyman up the middle. Two-yard run by Orlando Heyman. <laughs> and hobbling off the field there, number 22. Barbarino plays big. Orlando Heyman. Looks like he's got some ankle issues. He's been a big part of the Aggie offense. We'll hope he's okay. Fakes the handoff. Scott looking to throw, has to avoid the defender. Gets outside, lets it go down the sideline. He's got a receiver open, but pass was just too far out in front of Sterling Clappin. That'd be Nate, Nate Nittig. That'd be Nate Nittig, uh, Sterling Clappin would be the reserve kicker. Drop back to pass, he'll roll out, throws it up quickly to Aguiman, who breaks into the open at the 30, the 25, the 20. Just a fantastic play on third and long. And a brave play to go with the shovel pass there. Yeah, Scott just kind of dumped it out there as the defenders got to him. And a big gainer there for Aggieman. And Scott showing good awareness here on the play before that. Showed an excellent job of juking between two defenders. Just couldn't quite get the pass out there, but right there dumps it off to Aggieman. And big gain, puts him in a great situation here. First and 10 inside the 19 yard line. He'll roll out to right quick, throw out to Aggieman again. And he'll fall forward with tacklers on him up to the 10 yard line. That'll make it second down and short, so another nice gain. They'll mark him around right at the 10. I'll bring out a second and long two. Here they got Taylor lined up here on the far outside. 
Scott takes the snap, hands it off to Aggieman up the middle to the left. He's still on his feet. And he's in for the touchdown from 11 yards out. Cedric Aggieman. This might be quite a high scoring game here. We're not even at the half and we already have 34 combined points. The team to win here might be the last one to score. Barbarino will be Barbarino will be the holder for the Aggies. Telez back in for the extra point. Ball bobbled. Barbarino's gonna have to let it go and ball hits the ground. Incomplete pass. Now that's gonna cost the Aggies a point. So with 423 left to play in the first half, it's OPSU 20, Lion College 14. Hawkins and Abel back deep once again. Receive the kick for the Scots. Ellis still trying to get that ball to stay on the tee with the wind that we've got here today. Was able to kick it off without a holder on the last one. Texas players, here's the approach and the kick. All the way back deep into the end zone, they'll down it. So it'll be first and 10 at the 25 again for the Scots. Still plenty of time in this first half. Aggies defense is gonna to have to play good defense here. With 4.23 left to play in the half. All right, everyone, let's hear it for your Panhandle State Aggies. They'll line up in the same pistol formation. And in motion again. Makes the handoff. Option play to the short side of the field. And that's going nowhere. Because he's going to be brought down for a loss. Tackle for a loss on the play by number 15, John Jeffrey. The John Jeffrey, number 15, on the tackle. A great play on that one. I'm Judge and the umpire will discuss something here. That might be a clock adjustment. Clock now running under four minutes to play. Second, about 15 yards to go. There's Abel in Look motion. To throw it out there. He's going to try to throw it deep. Shields cuts off the receiver. That one falls harmlessly. Well, it'll be third down and 14 yards to go now. And he was trying to get it out to Trent Webb there. I thought he might try to swing it out to Abel on the motion, but. Uh... I just go deep with it. Shield plays it well. I think that's what they wanted. They wanted the defense to buy on that route. They've thrown out there in the flat several times and then try to hit the deep ball on that deep slant pattern. But Shields did a great job on coverage and didn't allow that. Drops back to pass. Throws it out towards the sideline. Out. Now pattern to about the 35, no good, so it's going to be forced down. And they're going to be forced to punt. And Aggies are going to get some decent field position. Still 340 left on the clock. Number 14, Nick Shields back to receive. Nick Shields back deep to receive. He'll line up at about his 40, between his 40 and 45 yard line. Spread formation for the kick. There's a snap and the kick. Good line drive. Shields gets it at about the 35. He'll cut away from that defender. Two more, he's past the 40. And up to 
to about the 44-yard line. And you can see his teammates signaling to him as it was coming down. They said, fair catch it. And he said, no, I want to get some yards out of this. And he did. He got a few out of it. Gives him a little better field position. So with 328 still left on the clock, the Aggies will look to try to add to their six-point lead here. Mark ball, ball marked just inside their 43 yard line. <laughs> and in motion, they'll turn, hand off to the tailback. This will be Carter. He's up near the 50. Looks like he went down lane. He looks like he's okay there. And I, I believe that's the first run we've seen by Brick Baker all season, at least here at home. Somebody got his foot there. I didn't see it. It looked like he almost just went down on his own, but nice six yard gain. And off to Heyman up the middle. He's gonna be stopped just after crossing the 50 yard line. Here the 48 yard line. He's he second down, there. third down and about two yards to go. And third and short here. The Aggies have delivered multiple times on third and long. So let's see if they can convert this here. Trips to the left. Heyman line up just to the right of Scott. Pistol formation. And Scott's going to run with it, trying to get behind his blockers up past the 45, and it's going to be good for a first down. He makes his way up to the 42 yard line. That'll stop the clock momentarily. That's good for another Aggie first down. Clock rolling again, 2.20 to play. Snap, hand off the to Heyman, and he's gonna be stopped almost right at the line of scrimmage. Might have gained a yard on the play, so second down, nine yards to go. And you have the, the speed and receiving ability of Heyman. You got the power and receiving ability of Agamemnon. And then you have the running ability of DJ Scott. You just have so much diversity in the backfield for the Aggies, it's hard for a defense to stop. And in motion across the formation. He'll turn, fake the handoff, throws it out quickly outside. And ball is dropped by Miguel Hudson. And the Aggie fans are looking for an unnecessary roughness. Late hit. And Hudson still down on the field. With 1.40 to play, we've got a stoppage of play for injury timeout. Aggies leading 20 to 14. gets up and is helped off. Let's go on. Has to be assisted off though. Looks like he's got some kind of an ankle or knee injury there that they'll have to check out. Hopefully just a contusion or something simple like that. But he can return to the game. Trips formation, boundary side. Scott in the backfield with Heyman. He'll drop back to pass. Hits his man there. Breaks the first tackle into the open field. He's at the 10, the 5, touchdown Aggies. Lion College surrenders a touchdown there to Cameron Taylor, and it looks like there's going to be an excessive celebration call or something of the sort. They threw up a flag here right near the end zone. But the Aggies have to be excited about that. Cameron Taylor scores on a great pass by DJ Scott. See the pass protection held up just long enough to allow DJ Scott to get the ball off to Taylor. So an 
another ridiculously unnecessary penalty on the Aggies. They're just, they, luckily they haven't hurt themselves too bad with them, but it's about the fourth personal foul penalty on them today. Ball set down for Tellez, gets the kick to go through. So with 1.29 left in the first half, the Aggies now lead the Scots 27 to 14. Aggies, after the excessive celebration penalty, will be kicking off from their 20-yard line, which with a minute 29 left, depends on the return, could give the Scots an opportunity here before the half. There's the first kick where uh, it doesn't have to be reset. Picked up at about the 20, out to the 30, 35-yard line. And falls forward near the 40-yard line. We're going to be Trey Hawkins brought down by number 32. Number 32, Jafon Evans. Evans. Backup defensive back on the tackle. Of course, the last two kicks before that by Tellez went through the end zone. Of course, you make him kick it 15 yards further back, that's not going to happen. So that added to the field position for Lyon College. And we've got a flag on the field. And a little it looks like he's going to pick that up as he thought they broke the huddle with 12 men on the field. And they did break the huddle with 12, so instead of first and 10, it'll be first and 15. And they were trying to confuse Marcus McCants by having Abel act like he was going to line up way outside near the sideline, and then he just took off to join the rest of the team. Double tight end formation to the two tight ends to the right of the formation. They'll bring a fullback over there, too. Gee, I wonder if they want to run behind that, and they do. And it's not going to work. And Aggie defense is there. Flag on the field again. And it's going to be holding on Lion College. That's, that's kind of upsetting, you know. You have holding, but still the Aggie defenders get back there and like they did. Nate Leadhead there. Kind of leading the way, too. And the Aggies will take the penalty. So it's still going to be first down, but it's going to be first down about 25 yards to go. We've got a timeout on the field with 116 left in the first half. It's OPSU 27, Lyon College 14. Give it up for your Aggie drum line. Out of the timeout. Ball at the 24 yard line. First and 25 to go. They'll turn hand off to the tailback. He'll gain a few yards up past the 25 yard line. David Smith and Nathan Leith. Second down. Gain of about a yard. So first and 24 to go. So. Looks like way, Lions happy to go ahead and move, let the clock run out here in this first half. Oh yeah, the way this Aggie defense is playing, you really think you want to add on to it by giving them a first and 25? I don't think so. Pull back in motion. Fakes a handoff, looking to throw. And he wants to go to Hendricks. No, actually there he wanted to go to Chaquez Parker. Pass was too long. He was covered pretty well. And it's going to be third and long with 31 seconds left in the half. And that is a tough throw to make, especially in this wind, for a college quarterback to just place it in there where it perfectly would have had been because Jaquez Parker had a step, but only a step on his defender. So. A little long, it's going to be incomplete, a little short, and that's going to get intercepted. Surprised the Aggie safeties are playing up as far as they are. 
They'll turn, hand it off to the tailback. And he's knocked down. They'll have to they'll stop the clock as he was knocked out of bounds. Or no, timeout. OPSU with 22.8 seconds left in the half. See if they can hit lightning in a bottle here in these final few seconds as they force the fourth down. Back to receive the punt, Nick Shields. Aggies look like they might be coming after this one. And able to get the kickoff, low line drive. And it's gonna fall harmlessly to the turf at about the 26 yard line. 15 seconds left to play in this half. We'll see if the Aggies just take a knee here, or if they try to try for a big play. You would think they would at least try one deep because even if it gets intercepted, your potential for them coming back and scoring in 15 seconds isn't just too awful. That looks like they'll line up. Victory. In, uh, we maybe won't call it victory in the first half, but they'll line up Sorry. to take a knee. And that's what Scott does. So the Aggies will go to the half leading Lion College 27 to 14. We'll be back with the second half in about 15 minutes. Still getting situated. And college out on the field as well. Kicker's ready to get ready to go other than still waiting for the ball. Like the back judge will bring it out and hand it off to Gomez. In the first half, Orlando Heyman had quite a first half. Finished with 113 yards running rushing and the kickoff run rolls out of bounds so the Aggies will start off with decent field position again to start this second half leading by 13 as they'll take over first and 10 at the 35 yard line. And already before the Aggies have even touched the football another momentum shift in their favor here early. I mentioned Heyman with a 113 yards. That was actually receiving yards as he had three catches. Aggies had a total of 250 yards receiving and 96 yards rushing. We forget some of their big plays were out in the flats and things like that. Just like this one to Heyman, he's still on his feet past midfield up near the 30 yard line. What a start here. Just a little toss out into the flats. Big gainer for Heyman as Aggieman will come in to give him a short rest after that big gain. Hand off to Aggieman to the wide side of the field. Cuts inside two defenders. Ball is loose. And it looks that like is... Lyon College picks it up. He tries to go forward and knocked out of bounds. Ball turned over on that, turned over on that fumble. The miscue by Aggieman there wipes away what was a huge catch and run by Orlando Heyman and Coach Gaskamp clearly frustrated down there on the sidelines. Holding on to the ball. It's 
key part of the game. Turnover, typically turnover, not, whoever wins the turnover battle will win, a, win ball games. Hand off up the middle. Barrels his way up to the 30 yard line for a pretty decent gain. About seven yards, so it'll be second down and three. Aggieman had two carries for 17 yards in that first half, had four catches for 50 yards. As the two primary catchers, receivers for the Aggies in the first half were their running backs. Now a sack, ball is loose. Aggies have it. They still on his feet. He was and gone. The ends are for the touchdown. Number 48, Cameron Lyons on the recovery and, and the, the score. And the ball was knocked loose by number 92, Aaron Pinch. With the sack, they just knocked the ball loose as he hit the quarterback from the blind side. So a turnover of their own, and the Aggies score. So once again, we've seen it happen before. The offense will make a mistake, but the defense is there to bail them out because this Aggie defense is about as solid as we've seen. Barberino puts it down, Tellez puts it through, and the Aggies have increased their lead. With 13.45 still left in the third quarter, it's OPSU 34, Lion 14. And that Aggie defense excited over there on the sidelines, and why wouldn't they be? That was a great play. They'll get their chance to go right back out there again after this kickoff. Here's the approach for Tellez and the kick. Right to the goal line, ball dropped. He'll have to bring it out at the 10, 15, 20, and be knocked out of bounds at about the 22, 23 yard line. So good coverage by the Aggie defense. Kick coverage there. And as the Aggie defense takes field once again, let's, I mean, let's see if they can do something with it again here because they've pretty much done nothing but make plays all game. They'll run right behind where their motion man was. Barrels forward for a couple of yards. The second down and seven. Defenders looking to the sideline, getting the play call. Lion will split out two receivers to each side. Pistol formation, man in motion. Quick throw out there to the man in motion. He's going to be, he's still on his feet, but going to be dropped to the ground. Number 99, Justin Slaughter, the second man there with a big hit, and the umpire injured on the play, limping around right now. And to recover, looks like he's gonna try to tough it out though. Throw some dirt on it. Most of these guys, former football players themselves at some point. Third, they've marked it back to about third and nine. That's a loss of two on that play. Drops back the pass, throws it out in the flat, and gets maybe half a yard as he's shoved out of bounds by number 42, Darian Primes, with a good play. 
And it's fourth down again. And shoved right into the down and distance indicator and I, looks like he might have bent it a little bit. Did some damage. Fourth and nine, Nick Shields back deep to receive the kick at his own 40 yard line. And they're getting their money's worth out of Ignacio Gomez today. There's the snap and the kick. Barely got it off in time. Line drive, it rolls back to the 35. Looked like Nick Shields could have made a play on that one. Probably wishing he did now. But also on the other side, better safe than sorry. So the Aggies take back over. 12.08 still left in this third quarter. Aggies leading by 20, 34 to 14. DJ Scott leads the offense back out on the field for their first possession of the second half. See if they can Arino read. comes on late, he'll have to trot back off. Luckily he wasn't in the huddle, so they, no penalty or anything. Trips to the right side of the formation. May have drawn the defense off, throws it out but it's going to fall incomplete. Trying to get Cameron Taylor again. No call for offsides there. They did, defensive line did move, but maybe didn't move into the neutral zone, so no call. You can jump offsides as long as you get back. Heyman, hand off to Heyman to the short side. He's up near the 40 yard line looks to the like maybe to the 41. They'll mark him right at the 40. So it'll be third down and five yards to go. As I mentioned, Heyman had a good first half. Caught three passes for 113 yards and a touchdown. And also Ran 12 times, he's got the ball again. Up Pat, up near midfield. It's gonna be another Aggie first down. He took a big hit there from number eight, Casey Johnson, but didn't let him phase him. Kept his feet going. Got the extra yards needed to get a first down there. Heyman rushed 12 times for 40 yards in that first half. This time it's Aggieman up past the midfield stripe. About a three yard gain on the play. That'll make it second down and seven yards to go for the Aggies. They'll bring out the tight ends, bring in some more with receivers. Trips formation to the wide side of the field. And fakes the handoff, keeps it up the middle. A read option play. Nice gain, that's gonna make it Third and short, maybe two yards, long two yards to go for the Aggies. Scott ran the ball four times for 22 yards in the first half. It was 12 of 19 passing for 243 yards and two touchdowns. He'll look to throw here under pressure, lets it go, it goes backwards. But they'll say it's an incomplete pass even though it did go backwards. Aggieman fell on it, so the Aggies would have maintained possession anyway. And had he looked out to his check down just a little faster, Aggieman had a lot of room to work with there, but trying to get something downfield and feels the pressure there and not quite able to get the ball out. Looks like they'll go for it in here. Well, it's fourth down and a long two. Maybe even a short three. Play clock down to three, two. Just get it off, rolls out, throws the pass off. It's knocked down, tried to get it to Aggieman, but the ball's gonna be turned over on downs. Back to the Fighting Scots with 10.36 still left to play in the third quarter. So once again, the Aggies will be forced to lean on their defense here as they've given up pretty good field position to the Scots now by going on fourth down. It'll be first and 10 at the 42 yard line. 
Hendrix is out in the slot here. Man in motion across the formation. They'll look to throw there, fakes the short pass, goes deep. And had two men deep. Nick Shields was over the top. John Jeffrey was running alongside him as well, so well covered on that play. Didn't bite on the, the fake pass out into the flat. Abel in motion again. They'll hand it off to him on the jet sweep, cuts inside and makes a couple yards, but he's gonna be brought down number 26 for the Aggies, Miles Alexander on the tackle, reached out, brought him down with the arm tackle. That was a good job there in his linebacker position. The Aggies have forced another third and long here, and that's been kind of the tone they've set all day since they started out. again, fakes the handoff, looking deep over the middle, yep. trying to get it to Hendricks. Hendricks with the shove. We'll have to see this. Looks like offensive pass. You never know on these calls. Sometimes you think they're going to call offensive pass interference, and it, they'll call it on the defense. So we'll wait and see on the call. And it is. Like we've seen so many times, they're going to call it holding on the defense here, not, not pass interference. So that's going to give a 10-yard gain to Lyon College and also an automatic first down. That'll be at the Aggie 47-yard line. Just under 10 minutes left in this third quarter. And I didn't say anything that founded that except Hendricks fell when he was trying to push the defender off of him, push the defender away. Able in motion again. They'll fake the handoff. Quarterback keeper, that's Josh Sierra in there. And he has stopped after maybe a yard gain. So great defense there. Aggie defense right there in the middle. Shut him down. So second down and nine. Asper Smiley into the game for Cameron Lyons along that front line for the Aggie defense. Two splits to the wide side of the field. No fullback will go in motion. Quick throw outside to Hendricks. Can't bring him down. And he gets up near the 40 where three Aggies run into him there. John Jeffrey there. Also number 27, Warren Dillon in on the tackle. The first tackler tried to hit him around his legs, but the problem is his legs are so big, that's not quite effective. Roll out to his right, he tries to threaten go of the pass. Under pressure, he's gonna be sacked, ball's loose. And Lion College falls on it, so, but it's gonna be fourth down, and all the way back on their side of the 50, so the Aggie defense did their job on that third down play. Tried to fool them with the formation. Uh, tried to fool them with the formation with a jumbo package. Make it look like they were gonna run, fake the run, roll out, try to get the pass there, but Aggie defense was up to the challenge. Nick Shields lining up at about his 10 yard line. Kick almost blocked again. It's gonna roll inside the 10 near the goal line. 
And the Aggies are going to have 99 yards of field in front of them. 7.55 to play on the clock. OPSU leads 34 to 14. Aggie offense out there. Scott's going to line up under center with a I formation behind him. Heyman, the tailback, he'll get the ball and tries to muscle forward a little bit and get a little breathing room. And if he got anything, it wasn't much. And it looks like they'll say he no gain on the play. So second down and 10. Aggie, Aggie's trying to avoid a big mistake here. That's one of the few times we've seen Orlando Heyman not pick up any yards. Aggie's just at least trying to get out of the shadow of their own goal. Hand off to the fullback this time. He'll get up to about the four yard line. That's uh, George Dominguez, number 35 into the game. George Dominguez, a local kid from Turpin, Oklahoma. They'll bring in the jumbo package with a couple of tight ends. A single back formation with a wing back. That H back will cross. They'll turn, hand it off to Heyman again. And he's going to be stopped for no gain. So the Aggies are going to have to punt from the back of their own end zone. This is uh, always tough in this situation because you don't have the normal yardage you have back there. But also, you have to protect so much that oftentimes the return man can get a little more room to run on the return. And we saw Test uh, practicing some punts out here during halftime. And he was getting some good boots off against the wind. Let's see how well he does kind of with the wind here. We have Jacob Tess standing in the back of the end zone. There's the snap. Gets it off. And pretty decent kick all the way back to the 46-yard line. He'll take off from there. And he's going to be stopped there. No game on the return. Fantastic coverage by the defense. Jasper Smiley, the one that brought him down. Several other Aggies there as well. And the referee looks like he's going to spot it right at midfield. No ball placed at the 46-yard line of OPSU. 5.42 still left in the third quarter. OPSU leading by 20 points. Trying to maintain that big lead. Pistol formation. Abel in motion again. They'll hand it to him on the jet sweep. Cuts up inside. He's inside the 40. Still on his feet. 35, 30. And finally wrestled down inside the 30-yard line at about the 27. And tackling, one of the things this team has specialized in all day. Didn't quite have it there as Abel was able to shift away. So first and 10 from the 28 yard line for the Scots. Kind of a power pistol here with that fullback to his side. He'll go in motion. Ends up behind the guard. Quarterback looked to throw. He's going to take off running. He's grabbed right away. Jawan Purifoy had a hold of him, but he was trying to keep him. He didn't want to tackle him forward and was trying to pull him back. But uh, Jones was able to continue to move forward for at least a yard there. He it's kind of funny. Look, it looked like uh, maybe Purifoy needs to join the uh, rodeo team there as he was trying to wrangle him down there. He's going to bulldog him. So second and nine. Four and a half minutes still to play in this third quarter. First if he's going to join the rodeo team here at OPSU, he's going to have to be pretty good. Mm -hmm. Two split to the boundary side, one to the wide. Man in motion. Quarterback will run it. This is the backup quarterback again. He's to the 20-yard line. 
And knocked out of bounds. We'll see where they mark him at the 18. That's going to be good enough for a first down, it looks. That was Josh Sierra again, who's come in a few times uh, to run the ball. And other than a couple of big plays, we hadn't really seen much from the Lion offense all day, but they come in here. They're starting off a solid drive, trying to drive in and score on the Aggies. And let's see if this Aggie defense can tighten up right here, now in the red zone, and keep them out here. They'll leave Sierra in this time. Pistol formation again. Abel in motion. Fakes the handoff. He'll run to the wide side of the field. Cuts inside. And he's up near the 10-yard line. Or 15-yard line, I'm sorry. He's second down after a three-yard gain. So second down and seven. Sticking with Sierra, quarterback. Abel in motion again, low snap. He'll drop back to pass this time. Throws to the corner and intercepted in the end zone. He'll take a knee in the end zone. That was number 28, Marcus McCants. Well, the Aggies will take over again at their 20 yard line, first and 10. That's a ball Cody Jones should have never have thrown. He would have been better off taking the sack. Maybe Cody Jones would have made a better throw as that was the backup Josh Sierra. We've seen oh. him. That was really the first pass we've seen him throw. Kind of trying to see it probably if they could catch the Aggies off guard again because he's ran the ball. They've ran the ball every time, every play he's been in so far. So not fooled. McCants was not fooled and caught the interception at the back of the end zone. Took a knee and gave the Aggies back the ball first and 10. They'll see if they can add on to their lead. There's a snap, handoff to Heyman. Up past the 25, near the 30, helmet comes off. He'll have to come out for a play. So Aggie will come in. It'll be second one now. Motion across the formation. They'll turn, hand it off to Aggieman right behind where that motion was. He cuts through. He's up to the 35, up to the 37 yard line. That's going to be an OPSU first down. You know, we talked about it in the first game, first home game of the season. We haven't mentioned tonight, but that the veteran part of this team is on that offensive line with four returning starters up there. They're doing a great job getting a push. Absolutely. There's a snap, drops back to pass. Scott running for his life here. Let's it go, he's got a man open out too far in front of Braylon Chandler, so that'll fall to the ground incomplete. Second and 10 for the Aggies. Chandler was running open there, had a defender running behind him, but had a couple of steps on him. Scott did a good job just avoiding the sack there. Oh, absolutely. Kind of serpentining through defenders there. Able to get outside of the pocket, but once he does, and he has to throw outside of the pocket, you really find out, you know, his passing game's not quite where it should be, but the running game more than makes up for it as they're up 34 to 14. Scott takes the snap, drops back to pass, looking to go deep. He does, he's got a man wide open. That's caught at the 30, up to the 20 yard line. That's Brady Barrett with the catch. The biggest pass play of the day there. Forty-four yard catch there. Scott turns, hands off to Payment up the middle. He's inside the 15 yard line. So good gain on first down. That's going to make it second down and a short five, long four. 
Just under two minutes to play still in this third quarter. Aggies leading by 20, 34 to 14. And we've got an injury timeout on the field. 135 left in the third quarter. OPSU 34, Lion College 14. Eric Young was the injured player for the Scots there. Able to make it off the field on his own, so that's good to see. And it looks like we've got illegal motion there. False start on the Aggies. Well, that'll make it second down and just shy of 10 yards to go. Negates that run on first down by Heyman. Heyman to the left of Scott this play. He'll fake the handoff, throws it, got a man wide open. Into the end zone for Cameron the touchdown. Taylor. Cameron Taylor. Once again, that's the second touchdown of the night. At the afternoon. Totally redeemed himself. Oh yes. Had a rough start early on, but has really made for, up for it since then. Number 13, Cameron Taylor on the score. by DJ Scott. And DJ Scott now has three passing touchdowns in the game, I believe. The Aggies are going to be calling for a false start on the extra point. I don't know that I've ever seen this. We'll have to see. Looks like they're discussing what exactly it is. Yeah, it is. No, defense no, in the they neutral zone. Defense in the neutral zone, so. Gain some extra six inches. If, if the Aggies wanted to go for two on this play to get back that extra point that they missed, they could do it now. And it, and looks, it looks like, like they like will. They're going to. And OPSU calls a timeout to get the play they want in with 110 left to play in the third quarter. It's OPSU 40, Lion 14. No Aggies back out on the field. Of course, that was the neutral zone penalty. They've decided to line up for the two-point conversion, kind of trying to get back that extra point that they missed, that was missed earlier on a bobbled snap. Pistol formation. Two to the right, one to the split to the left. He'll drop back to pass, throws it out. It's caught by Taylor, and it's good. So now with 110 to play, the Aggies now lead 42 to 14. So as that's ball on the tee, he'll line up, make sure his teammates are ready on each side. Here's the approach and the boot. High end over end kick. Oh, and no. just going to go out of bounds at about the one or two yard line. Just missed the corner of that end zone. So instead of the 25, Lion will get it at the 20, 35. And that's the disadvantage of the panhandle wind. So you can see that flag out there just sticking straight out in the wind. OPSU would like to thank today's game sponsor, Apollo Midpoint. Maggie's up now by four touchdowns. Pull back in motion, pistol formation. He'll roll out to his right, lets it go, oh, tipped away. Great defensive play there by Dominic Bell, trying to get the ball to Hendricks again. And Bell, Bell a little mad at himself, he wanted that pick there. Great defender though, named a CSFL Defensive Player of the Week, week one, after his performance here at Carl Wooten Field and doing well today. And I don't know who they're going to pick as the defensive MVP on the Aggies because everybody's been doing well today. They have they have had some great defensive play today. Marcus McCants with two interceptions so far. Man in motion across the formation. He'll drop back to pass. 
looking to get a screen going. Ball hits the ground, so that's going to be incomplete. That's going to make it third and ten. And it seems like the Aggies have really built momentum. Abel in motion, makes the handoff, looking over the middle, and out in front of Hendricks, no good. It's going to be fourth and ten for the Scots, and they're going to be forced to punt. Just a little too far out for Hendricks. He was well covered, two Aggies there to defend. Yeah, Dijon Jeffrey clapping his hands together saying, man, I wish I would have got that one. Snap for the punt, gets it off. Shields back, but it lands out of bounds at the 21 yard line, so no, no opportunity to return it. Shields running a little gingerly as he came off the field there. Hopefully he's okay. The Aggie offense coming back out on the field. That offensive line has done a great job today. Allowed the Aggie running game to build up yards as well as protect Scott when he's in the pocket. Hand off to the tailback, Heyman. Around the left side, past the 30 yard line. Now Heyman doesn't look like the biggest guy, but boy, he runs with some power too. He pushes the pile forward when he does run into a defender. Nine yard run, number 22, Orlando Wayne. Second down and one at the 31 yard line. Final seconds of the quarter running off. Looks like Aggies may not have to run another play as the play clock has a few more seconds on it than the game clock. So the Aggies will let this one go ahead and run out. And they will head to the fourth quarter, leading Lion College 42 to 14. So we're ready to start this fourth quarter. Aggies leading by 28 points. J. Scott heads into this fourth quarter. He's 15 of 25 for 340 yards passing and three touchdowns with one interception. He'll turn, fake the handoff, looking to pass. He's going to have to scramble. Still running on his feet up past the 30, the 35, the 40, and finally tackled out of bounds. Oh, that's going to be a 15-yarder. And I didn't see who it was, but whoever set the edge out there did an excellent job allowing Scott to get around the outside, get the first down and more. Sometimes those blocks out on the edge by your receivers or your tight ends or running backs, sometimes they go a little bit unnoticed, but that's what turns a small play into a big play. And I think it was 32 or 82 Kyler Musgrave, but I'm not certain. Kyler Musgrave, another local kid, Turpin, Oklahoma. Oh, ball moved all the way up in the Lion territory at the 44-yard line. First and 10 for the Aggies. Even though the down marker still says second. <laughs> Drops back to pass, finds the receiver up to the 40, and he's going to be brought down there. Good tackle. Nick West yep. with the reception. Right. Nick West gets about five yards on that play, so second down and five. Scott's starting to show us a little more in the passing game now. Maybe he just needs to get warmed up. 
Oh, yeah. Hand off to Heyman. Heyman pushing the pile forward. And he's going to be stopped, though, after about a three-yard gain on the play, maybe just two. So it'll be third down and four. And you can tell the Aggie offense wants this. You can tell they really want to get down the field and really try to put this game away right here. At the 38-yard line, looked like Heyman came off having some equipment issues. Aggieman takes his spot. Scott drops back to pass. He's under pressure. He's going to be sacked back at the 46-yard line. Number 45, Ethan Skarmus busted through there from his linebacker position on that blitz and just blew that play up before it ever had a chance to get started. That'll be fourth down and about 12 yards to go, and that's going to force the Aggies to punt. Snap, Jacob Tess gets the kick off, trying to hit that one into the corner, and it'll land out of bounds at about the 13 yard line, moves it up to the 14. So with 12.43 left to play. The OPSU Aggies lead the Lion Fighting Scots 42 to 14. And with some third quarter stats. Aggies with 402 yards of offense. They've held Lyon to just 199 through three quarters of play. Hand off to the fullback right up the middle. Gains a couple. Brought down there by number 39. That's Adrian Johnson. 5'11", 205 pound red shirt freshman. Second down and 10 yards to go as they'll say he just got back to the line of scrimmage there at the 19. So one split to each side, H back in motion. Takes the handoff, he's gonna be sacked! Number 42 to Darian Prime. With a great sack, just came right off the edge. Nobody got him. And that's going to make it third and very long for the Scots. Once again, the Zaggy defense continues to come through when they need it. Third down and 16 yards to go from the eight yard line. Aggies have really just dominated this second half. You know, had the turnover on their first possession after one big play. That's really been the only bad play of the second half for them as they have dominated since then. We've got a timeout on the field. 11-11 left to play. It's OPSU 42, Lyon College 14. to the wide side of the formation. Hendricks lined up on the boundary side. Pistol formation, man in motion back across. Drops back to pass in the end zone, lets it go over the middle. And that one falls incomplete. The closest man to it was an Aggie defender, number 15, Dijon Sheffries. That means it's gonna be punting time again for Lyon. This time from their own eight yard line. The Aggies' domination in this second half just continues. The Aggie fans getting familiar with Ignacio Gomez. They're probably, he's probably their favorite Lion player right now. The 
Nick Shields back deep near mid the midfield stripe. Let's get a special teams touchdown. We've got a defensive one. That one's going to go out of bounds. Probably Nick gets his hands on it, but it rolls out of bounds in OPSU territory at the 42, it looks like, where they're marked. Aggies will take over with exactly 11 minutes left to play. And it looks like we've possibly got a change at quarterback as DJ Scott may be done for the day with the Aggies leading by four touchdowns. Looks like Brandon Ramon may be coming in. And he will. And he will be. Also a change at running back, George Dominguez, who had a carry earlier when the Aggies were backed up near their goal line. He's in at running back. Quick pass out in the flats, knocked down by one of the Lion defenders. Now in that quarterback for your Aggies, number 12, Brandon Ramon. And Brandon Ramon also has the ability to move outside the pocket like Scott does. Not quite as well at that, but maybe has a little more accuracy with the ball at certain times. Tied in in motion across the formation. They'll turn and hand it over to Dominguez. Breaks through a tackle, falls forward past the 45 to the 46. Or a nice four yard gain on second down. So that'll make it third down and six yards to go. A lot of backups, even on the on the front line for the Aggies in. Some guys getting some experience. That's always good when you're up by quite a bit in the game and you can afford to get your young guys in some experience. And in motion across the formation again. Drops back to pass. Dump it off in the flat to Musgrave. And through his hand as the defender got there just as the ball did as well. So that's going to bring up fourth down. And the Aggies will punt. The other thing you like about getting subs in is when players graduate, it's nice to have guys who have at least been on the field before. Oh, yeah. Uh, you never like guys the first time they step out there is their first start. Test back for the punt. It's over his head. It rolls down near the 15-yard line. Test will just fall on it there. So Lion College will take over with 10-10 left to play at the Aggie 15-yard line. These are the kind of mistakes you want to avoid when you do have a big lead like this. Yep. So whereas the Aggies may have been thinking about bringing some subs in on defense, I would imagine they're going to bring pretty much their starters back in with Lyon taking over at the OPSU 15-yard line. And you can see they still got both of their starting defensive backs out there. That'd be Marcus McCants and Warren Dillon. Pistol formation, two to the boundary sign, man in motion. They'll hand it off to him. And he's going to be hit and brought down in the backfield. And John Jeffrey. What a play by Jeffrey there. Now, Jeffrey is not listed on the two deep chart, but boy, he's made a lot of great plays tonight for today for the Aggies. Second down and 15 yards to go. Here's a snap, he drops back. He'll throw it out in the flat. Aggie defense up there. Boy, they did a great job again. Several defenders out there. Number 58, David Smith on the tackle. Aaron Kinch was out there as well, made the initial contact, but he was able to slip his tackle, but good pursuit by Smith. Brought him down, so it'll be Come third down and 11. Let's get rowdy. Just under nine minutes to play. Aggies leading by 28. And in motion across the formation. Drops back to pass, lets it go to the corner of the end zone, and it's 
too far out of bounds. Incomplete. It's going to be fourth down. McCants on the defense there. Great coverage. He was all up on him, just on the borderline of defensive pass interference, but just on this side of it to where the flag's not thrown, and that's exactly where you want to be. And, of course, it probably helps that the ball landed uh, uh, a little ways oh, yeah. out of bounds, too. So. Pistol formation again, two splits to each side. That's just about every play. A man in motion for line. Ball's loose. Running back picks it up, but he's going to be dragged down for a loss. And multiple flags on the field. Cameron Lyons with the tackle. We do have a flag on the field. I'm wondering if this one might be a face mask. He might have accidentally grabbed his face mask here, which would give Lyon a first down. And it is. So, of course, Lyon, Lyons obviously was not trying for that. It just yeah. happened to be the way that the running back turned as he was tackling. And he got a piece of that face mask, which that was fourth down. That would have, ball would have been turned back over to the Aggies. But instead, the Scots have a first and goal from the nine yard line. So big break for them. Fullback comes in motion. Quarterback hands it off to the tailback. And he's gonna be wrestled down, looks like for no gain. So second and goal. And the Scots here trying to force one in to make this game look a little less lopsided. Not really gonna change the outcome here, but maybe if they do something here, it gives them a little less anti-momentum going into their next game, I suppose. But the Aggies want to show that they can make a goal line stand here. Quarterback hands off the tailback, has to avoid a defender. He's brought down by several others after maybe a yard gain. Busting into that backfield, though, number 90, Braden Price. Right. Made the running back adjust almost as soon as he got the handoff. You know the time is. Third and goal from the eight yard line. Two splits to the boundary side, one to the wide side. And will come in motion across the formation. He'll turn, quarterback's gonna roll out to his right, lets it go to the corner of the end zone. It's and way wait. out of bounds. It's gonna be fourth down. Stone fastball is incomplete and hit for number 30, P.D. Murray. And so that's the second third down, which he's throwing it high and out of the corner of the end zone. Let's see if the Aggies can fare better on this fourth down than they did on the last one. Other than, other than catching the corner of a face yeah. mask, they did pretty good on that place. <laughs> well, nevertheless, fourth and goal from the eight. Wait. And we've got a timeout on the field. 6.49 left to play. Aggies in control, leading 42 to 14. So here we are out of the timeout, fourth and goal from the eight yard line. There's the snap, fakes the short throw, tries to roll out, has to avoid pressure, lets it go. It's no good. Oh, we have a flag in the backfield. That may be a late hit. And a roughing the passer penalty is going to save the Aggies. Number 49, Dominic Bell, is going to be called for that. 59, Nathan Leadhead down on the field. That's not good because Leadhead is a big part of this defense. We haven't called his name as much tonight as we did the first night. He he had a great game that opening night. Now, Cody Jones, the quarterback <laughs> for Lyon, has to go out of the game as he was injured on that late hit as well. So twice the Aggies now have held them on fourth down in this 
in this situation down here after this after that punt snap went over Tess's head and he had to fall on it at the 15. Twice they've held him and twice they've gotten some sort of personal foul penalty that's given them a first down. That is one thing they're going to have to come away from this game and clean up because I think that's about five personal foul penalties they've had as we've had it from the first play of the game yeah. now all the way up till now. And Leadhead is to his feet. Good to see that he's able to walk on it off in his own power. Always happy to see players do that, whether you're, it's a team you root for or not. You oh, absolutely. Never want to see anybody injuries. get hurt. Right. 6.38 left on the clock, and once again, it is first down for the third time now for Lyon College. This might Except be the oddest series I've seen all year. Starting at the five now. If the Aggie defense is able to hold him out, quarterback runs it, he's near the goal line. And they'll hold him out just shy of the goal. That was Sierra, the running quarterback that they've had. Of course, they had to take Jones out earlier. So it'll be second and goal. And Sierra has to go out. Maybe. Yeah. As he was hurt on the play, so they'll bring their third quarterback in. That's number 10. That's going to be Lamar Hollinshed. Tight formation, no, no split out. Snap is on the ground. Quarterback has the fall on it back at the 10 yard line. And tell me if you've seen this before. So this is gonna be third down. I'll tell you what, if the Aggies hold them down, if you think about how many plays will have been run from the 15 yard line starting out there, I mean, that would just be a, be an incredible defensive stand. If it ends up. And they'll say it was a defensive. Defense was offsides on the play, so that will negate the bad play. So half the distance, which I don't know if they can move the length of the ball half the distance where they are. So. Yep. It's at about the one inch line right so now. So. Sierra's back in there. Tight formation, no wideouts again. Quarterback's going to keep it. Sierra, he's going to be stuffed at the goal line. No, they'll say he is in. Got the ball just across. But that's still yeah, impressive for the Aggies. A total of, I think, uh, 11 plays. They had to stay there right around the goal line and defend. It was. It was an impressive defensive stand there. Well, line up for the extra point. There's a snap, the hold, and the kick is good so with 549 still left to play the scots cut into the aggies lead but opsu still is ahead 42 to 21. with 549 left in the game your Panhandle state aggies so the aggies are lined up Expecting an onside kick. Got their hands team out there. Looks like they've got about five tight end, H-back type players on that front line. A little bit of good news. Multiple Leap. receivers right behind them. Leap heads down here. He's talking to the staff, but it doesn't look like he's being evaluated anymore, so. That's good. Obviously, probably going to hold him out for the remainder of this one, just for safety reasons. But. Terrell Fallon is back deep for the Aggies, just to make sure. There's the kick to the short side. It's through, ball's loose, oh. and it looks like Lyon College has it. As they'll take over first and 10 at the Aggies' 46-yard line. Some good heads-up play by the Lyon kickoff team. Looks like Cooper Savage, one of the wide receivers, got his hands on it, but just couldn't get a grip on it. But the good news for the Aggies is now their best unit comes onto the field. Of course, that unit's a little tired after quite a few plays out there on the last drive. As we mentioned, 11 plays. 
from inside that 15 yard line. Man in motion, they'll overload to that side. Sierra's gonna run that way up past the 50 yard line. He'll push for a ball on the ground. And it looks like OPSU may have gotten it back. And it is. So just like that, the OPSU defense gets the ball back as Sierra fumbled the ball. So Jeffries with the fumble recovery. We've called his name quite a bit. Another player not mentioned in the two deep who's had a, just a fantastic game tonight on the defensive side of the ball. Absolutely, and when your defense is uh, when your defense forces turnovers like that, who needs a hands team? Right. So 5.32 still left to play. Now Scott back out there at quarterback with Heyman behind him. They're going to try to finish this one off. Hand off to Heyman up to the 45, up to the 50 yard line. So nice gain on first down. About seven yards. So Orlando Heyman. Second down and three. I think that about second down is, and four as they mark the ball at the 49 yard line. Clock rolling just under five minutes left to play. The Aggies can avoid disaster leading by three touchdowns. They're looking to move to, they should be moving to two and oh in, in conference play. And two and oh here at home too. Hand off to Heyman again. Nice run up the middle, about a yard short of the first down. He crosses the 50 yard line. One of the linemen struggling to get up a little bit. Matthew Grants hurt a little bit. Of course, he's one of their senior offensive linemen at guard. One of the key players for the Aggie offense. Wouldn't that be great for this team, though, moving to. Three and one on the season. They had a bit of a rough season last year, but a great start to this season. Receiver in motion. Turn hand off to Heyman again. And just tripped up by his toes. He'll fall forward to the 46 yard line. And that's gonna be enough for a first down. And as the chains continue to move, the clock continues to move. And the Aggies are that much closer to claiming victory. Absolutely. And last year, I believe they didn't win a game at home, but this year they haven't lost a game at home. So already a nice little turnaround to go with the big rebranding campaign here at OPSU. So trips to the wide side of the field. Scott hands it off this time to Aggie, up to the 45. Falls forward to about the 42. Four yard run by number three, Cedric. Four yard game. Second down and six yards to go. Clock nearing the three minute mark. in across the formation there. And off to Aggieman. Oh, he's going to be brought down for a loss in the backfield. Number 34, Jonathan Hicks busted through on that play and blew that up before it got going. So it'll be third down and nine for the Aggies at the 45-yard line.
out of the timeout. Aggies in the pistol formation. Scott will roll out. He's going to be hit hard. Had a sandwich there by several defenders. And he's going to be brought back down for a loss back at midfield. It'll be fourth and long for the Aggies. That was a dangerous play. You know, he was getting hit from behind. The one thing they don't want right now is a turnover. Oh, absolutely. And he, that ball could have easily been knocked loose. Lyon College, and after that set of defensive plays, probably wishing they'd been that aggressive earlier in the game. Jacob Tess back to punt again. There's the snap, gets off the kick. It's a wobbler, lands at about the 20. Picked up at the 24 yard line. That's where Lyon College was, will take off, take over. First and 10 with 1-11 left to play in the game. Lyon College almost had a huge miscue because Jaquez Parker almost had that bounce off his foot right into the hands of uh, Dejon Jeffrey. And yeah, that looked, looked like the fans over here for OPSU definitely wanted that, but that, it looked to me like it didn't quite yeah. hit him. It came awfully close. It was but close, uh, but you could tell when Jeffrey got it that it was a, it didn't hit him. But as long as the Aggies can hold the Scots under 21 points in the last minute and 11 seconds, they should be okay. No run, hand off, run up to the 29 yard line, right at the 30 actually is where they'll mark it. So second down, five yards to go, clock under a minute to play. I am in no hurry, trailing by three touchdowns. Turn, hand off to the tailback again, and gains a couple of yards up to the 32 yard line. Clock now at 30 seconds left to play. This nope. may be the final play of the game, one more. It's third and about a yard to go. Of course, if they do get the first down, the clock will stop for a little bit, so they may. is gonna close out this win here. They'll line up in that power pistol. Pull back in motion again. Final seconds running off. And running back does pick up the first down. And the final seconds run off. And the OPSU Aggies move to 2-0 in CSFL con competition. And 3-1 and overall. And their only As loss they, coming to NCAA Division II opponent, Tarleton. That's right. And the Aggies. Now 2-0 at home as well. They'll look to celebrate this win. Stick around for a little while. We're going to get a few words with Coach Gascamp after the game. After everyone's done shaking hands and a little bit of celebrating as well. Right here, we're here at the 50 yard line with a victorious OPSU head coach, Russell Gaskamp. Coach, you're three and one on the season, two and zero oh in league play. We're really You got to be happy about that. Well, we, we talked so much this week about what a huge difference three and one would be versus two and two going into our bye. A lot more momentum. I thought we played pretty good today. There's really just kind of three weird plays. The long touchdown, we turned the guy loose in coverage, and the bad snap. We don't have those two plays. I think we blow them out pretty good, and so. I thought we played well on both sides of the ball, especially for about three and a half quarters. We would like to play a little cleaner at the end, but I'm ecstatic with the victory. Well, and for most of that second half, you guys were very dominant, obviously had a great play to start the game and then had a turnover, but then got a turnover back from that. And then really, until the very, till that kind of choppiness you mentioned at the end, you guys were just dominant on both sides yeah, of the ball. Yeah, really, I mean, it, 
and what I've got, what I'm going to tell our guys after the game is, you know, we play a cleaner game right there. That that could be a really lopsided score, and and, and we it was a lot of it was just self-inflicted stuff. We had a couple penalties, even on their last touchdown right here. We had, uh, I think, two personal fouls and an offsides penalty, and that, that stuff's silly. We got to clean that up if we're going to win this league. We got to get better at that kind of stuff. But I thought our kids played hard. They came out with a lot of energy today, and and uh, and they played really hard. And, and, and shout out to Orlando Heyman, man. I mean, he. He played his butt off. Preston was banged up today. You know, said had the early fumble, um, but Orlando played his lights out. Or played lights out today, and I was really happy with him. I haven't seen stats yet, but he played great. I think he finished with over 100 yards receiving and uh, rushing both. Yeah. So, had had a great game. Uh, your quarterback Scott, I think, probably had a career day for him passing over 200 yeah. and or uh, over 300 yards. Yeah, hit a lot of guys in the flats. Yeah, I haven't had his stats yet, but you know. Uh, we, we, we knew what a good player Nick West was going to be for us, and he had a 100-yard game last week. And, then, you know, you kind of saw the breakout game for Cam Taylor, and that's another one, you know, early on. He drops the ball, ends up in an interception. Uh, but, you know, it, 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 but the rest of the game, he's a hard guy to tackle, man. I don't know. His stat line, I'm sure, was really good. He is such a physical big guy. He's going to be a really hard matchup for everybody. So, Well, and defensively, of course, you mentioned the personal fouls there on that drive, but uh, I think you counted 11 plays on that drive. Your guys yeah. stop him in a, from the 15-yard line twice. You had to we, be, even though there was that negative yeah. of those penalties, you had to be happy with the, the defensive stand that yeah, they made. I mean, really, I thought the defense played really well today, except for the one long touchdown we gave up in a blown coverage. Um, uh, we, we busted a couple things earlier, but we knew that they were a, a team that caused some issues because of all the motion stuff. So, but uh, I thought they played really well from, you know, basically the second quarter on. You know, we hate giving up the one cheap one there at the end, but. Um, you know, we're just ecstatic about the victory. We're three and one now going to buy. We're in top of the league right now. There'll be other teams that'll be tied with us, but we're keeping pace with the teams at the top, and so we're real happy. So you mentioned you got a week off, and then it's Wayland Baptist yeah. on the road. Uh, what are your thoughts leading into the bye week? What is going to be your focus? Well, we, we've then... got to get better. I mean, you know, this team is not near the team that we're going to be. You know, we knew that going to year. We had a lot of new guys. We got to use the bye week to get better. We got to get healthy. I mean, we might not have looked at it, but there's a lot of guys that weren't playing today. A lot of guys that were banged up. Um, there, there's a better football team than what showed even today that's sitting on our sidelines in some ways. So, man, the number one thing is we got to get them healthy, get refreshed, get our legs back, get some of these nicks and bruises. And then I think we got a chance. We got a really tough four game stretch coming off of the bye. Two road trips, Wayland Baptist and Arizona Christian, and then two really tough road game or home games. Uh, with South Coast Assemblies of God and Langston is our homecoming here. So uh, our next four games are, you know, in a lot of ways is going to be what's going to decide whether or not we have a chance to win this conference or not. So, Well, you mentioned mentioned the home too. 2-0 and at home. You got to like that. Especially gotta, after last year. You, you last gotta, year was a little tougher. Yeah, you got to defend home turf. That's a big goal for us. Uh, but like I said, we didn't really care how we got the win today. We were just a stat to get it. We're excited to go into the bye. And, and uh, great crowd today. It's great energy in the stadium. Uh, awesome with the first responders deal and, and uh, there's a lot of energy in this crowd right now. I can't wait to get them back here. We get home after a couple weeks. So seemed like the crowd was pretty pumped up and the players especially. I think they really like the motorcycles a lot. Oh yeah, yeah. the helicopter and the motorcycles all the above was great. But um, our kids play with high energy today too. We talked to them about that. So we were real happy with the way that worked out and and we're just happy to be getting one. So. All right. Well, thanks, Coach. Aggies are 2-0 and in conference play. Heck, yeah. Thanks for joining us. Hell we'll see you Aggie next time. Hell the Aggies through, man. Hell the Aggies. <laughs>